Welcome back to another video, and today I'm doing another redstone tutorial. Just needed to close my door. Anyway, I've already done a redstone video on this this machine, but the audio quality was pretty bad. It was a it was a a combination lock that blows up if you get the wrong combination. I've already made a video about this, but the audio quality for that one was pretty bad. Anyway, um... Oh, great. This is the combination lock that blows up if you get the wrong combination. To see if it works correctly. That's how I'm finished. Anyway, first step, you want this shape. Okay, this shape is for the combination lock. You can put as many of these as you want, but th there, but there has to be a one block gap in between each one of them. So this will work. This will work, but this will not work. Second, second, you place item frames on each one of these. This is going to be a combination lock. Now you put a item in each one of these. I'll make up my combination with one, two, three. This is one. This is two. This is three. So it's basically the combination you put is is how many times you click on it minus one. This works is this works is uh, comparators will give off a will give off a redstone signal from item frames depending on how much you rotate that item. The signal can be drawn through the signal can be drawn through blocks. So these I did not need to put down my frames. These comparators will take signals out of these. Now you're going to want to put eight blocks after these depending on what the value of this. So the value of the item prints. This is one, so I'll put one block. This is two, so I'll put two blocks. This is three, so, so I'll put three blocks. Then you'll put redstone on those blocks. Now you want to put redstone torches at the edge. All right. Hey, I just had to. I just had to go somewhere else real quick. Nick, I had to switch to a different room because my little brother walked in on the video. That's why you might have heard the door opening. Anyway, so you'll place redstone torches at the edge of these. Then after that, you'll place redstone. Redstone goes one block out. So, yeah, like this. Then you'll place repeaters on those. Then repeaters on the uh, and then repeaters pulling a signal from the redstone torches. Now you'll want to connect them all. Right here, the reason I the reason I didn't put redstone right here is because of this. This is what I'm talking about. This is pretty bad for redstone. It could be good or it could be bad. In, in this case, it's bad. So, this this signal will never die out. This signal will only die out if I break part of this. Which is why that's so bad for this. If that happens, you won't be able to turn it off. Sorry, I didn't need to do that. So, you... So yeah, what this is, is basically, you don't want a repeater putting a signal into itself. The signal comes out here, then goes back into itself. When with, 
when using redstone, you don't want to have a repeater putting a signal into itself. Which is why you put repeaters right there. Next. And, yeah, I don't see any repeaters putting a signal into themselves. We should be good. And I just need to make sure. So now this is complete. I'm gonna restart it. As you can see, the signal activated. The redstone signals coming out. The redstone signals do not reach the redstone torches, or they do not. Reach the signals only only has a strength of one, so it cannot it cannot reach here. It cannot turn off the torch, activating the whole thing. But let's say the uh, so I'm going to do that. Now all the torches have been turned off. But if I if I add one extra uh, signal, the signal is able to reach down here. It's able to touch the repeater and get multiplied and restarted. That's how that's the main combination lock. Now it's the it explodes if you get the wrong combination. So now I'm going to put a put it off the there. Now this is a circuit. This is a circuit in Minecraft I like. This is a circuit in Minecraft I like to call the the conditional little signal. So basically you have a a piston, you have a block, then you then you have this. If I if I do this, that red this one sec. This lamp will not turn on. But let's say I ac activate the piston. The repeater now powers the block. So yeah. Yeah, you hook a couple lot, a couple of these conditional circuits into this. Again, it cannot. This cannot turn on unless this piston is activated. This is the lot. This is the conditional circuit. Now you'll have a. Right, you need to make sure this is all hooked up. So that all of this will power if the combination is wrong. So yeah, I'll head over here. You'll go down one. Then you'll make it. Then you'll do this for the. This now you have your conditional circuit. Or your. Yeah. So if you press this button naturally, nothing happens. If you press this button while the signal is wrong, that's that redstone activates. So then you'll want to I'll get glass for this, but you can also use slabs. This is a really cool redstone feature. I don't think a lot of people know this. Glass cannot cut off vertical signals. I'm just gonna make this a block so that it can be powered or transparent blocks like glass and blocks that aren't full. Well, they cannot be powered. So yeah, this is the TNT. This is the it explodes if the combination is wrong part. If you get it, if you press the button with the right combination, nothing happens because of the conditional circuit. But if you have the wrong combination. Oh, the signal doesn't, the signal isn't strong enough. But, now if you get it with the wrong signal, it activates, that redstone lamp activates. So, it'll be pretty much the same if you, it'll be the same result if you use a redstone lamp or TNT. heat. But I'm using a redstone lamp to show that it does work without destroying my progress. Now this is the, the door opens if, or this is a, a door opens if you have the right combination.
Okay, now this is the, yeah, you know what it is. The signal turns on if you have the right combination. Or the door opens if you have the right combination. So you'll go down. The thing is, right here, instead of putting a, unlike over there, Over over here, the um, the piston act the redstone went down, activating the piston if the combination was wrong. But instead, what you're going to do over here is place a redstone torch. What this does is, if you get the wrong combination in, that that piston will go down. This is sort of an annoying part. This this part is kind of hard. This is getting the signal from the button all the way over here. This is one of the most irritating parts of this. Like, the contraption itself isn't that hard, but this is... It's not too hard, but it's annoying. I'm gonna place a redstone lamp there to see if that if this is working. Yes, that is working. That torch will be going into this. And it's pretty much complete, I think. So we have the right combination in, so the door opens. And actually, I forgot one small part. Boom, now it's complete. This will just this is a um, a pulse extender. I'll show you what it does. So you give it a signal, it all powers up, and it extends the length of the redstone signal. Pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, this is complete. I have the right, I have the correct combination in here, so the door will open. But if I put in the wrong combination, the door will stay closed and instead this will activate. Let, let's see, I put in the correct com if I put in the correct combination again, that stays off, but the door opens. Now I'm going to review how exactly this works. So this is the combination lock part. If this, if the strength of the signal coming out of this is too high, it can reach the repeater and get multiplied. If it's too low, then the then there will there will be a signal coming from this torch, and yeah, because the torch cannot get deactivated, well, there will be a signal if the if rather the signal is too too high from being multiplied or being too low from not deactivating the torch and then you have your conditional circuits go two blocks down place a repeater facing up with a boss and boom you have yourself a conditional circuit Yeah, the conditional circuit makes it so that the it it's pretty self-explanatory. These the the signal will only activate under certain circumstances. So you have two conditional circuits. One act 
one of what allows the signal to pass if, the sig if there is a signal all from the combination lock, the other one, the other one blocks off the signal if the com if the combination is wrong. The other one blocks off the signal if the combination is wrong. Or it does not allow the signal to, to pass if you don't have the correct combination. Because if you have the correct of the correct combination, this torch activates acting, activating the piston, activating the conditional circuit, allowing the signal to go through. But if you have the wrong combination, this will deactivate, a, turning the conditional circuit off, not allowing the piston, not allowing the signal to go through. And then there's this. If the signal is, I'm doing a lot of talking. If the signal is correct. Then the, or if the combination is correct, uh, that will activate a, if the combination is wrong, then that will power up, turning on the conditional circuit, allowing the signal to go through if you press the button. Okay, that's in it. That's going to do it for this video. I, I kind of got distracted for a second, so I'm not sure if I finished driving up how how all well of this works. But boy, that's my cat. Anyway, that is this is the the combination lock that blows up if you have the wrong combination, and yeah. And it, sorry, that's my little brother. Anyway, so I have the correct combination. The door, op the door opens, and this this whole machine stays intact. Let's say I put in the wrong combination, and it blows up. And I said I don't want you in my videos anymore. I need, I need to figure out a way to prevent my brother from being in my videos. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'll see you in the next video. I might do a tutorial pretty soon. Bye.